How's it going everyone? College Lefty and in this video I'm going to be going into the event with the brand new face of the franchise diamonds that I've earned but I also pulled a diamond out of the free packs throughout uh, the face of the franchise throughout the team affinities I pulled another diamond out of free packs. This is amazing. I can't believe it. This is like the sixth or seventh diamond I've either won, packed, or earned and uh, this is how I've been able to kind of build up my stubs. I've been selling these cards. The first Cattell Marte, I was able to win in an event in my 12-0 event run. This one I'll actually keep. The previous one that I won, I sold for about 30k stubs. That one I'm going to go ahead and keep on my team or at least on my reserve. Simply because he's a great switch hitter. I'm going to try and complete the Diamondbacks collection. For Luis Gonzalez as well but I wanted to try and debut uh, the third baseman face of the franchise Justin Turner as well as debut uh, the 88 overall Aaron Nola face of the franchise for the Phillies I recently unlocked those cards earlier today and I wanted to debut them uh, these cards are pretty good this Justin Turner right here destroys lefties he has about 110 contact and 92 power he also has pretty good vision 92 vision to go along with uh 90 contact against righties 70 power against righties as well he doesn't really have the greatest uh, fielding stats or speed so i'll use him on the bench for rank seasons but for this event i'm going to go ahead and start him at third and bat him in the two spot so i'll also be using this aaron nola i know you guys can't see the attributes but this aaron nola is not bad he has stamina in the 90s his hits and Ks per nine are in the mid 80s, and there aren't that many pitchers that have hits and Ks per nine in the mid 80s at this point in the game cycle. So even though this card only has four pitches, he should be pretty effective. He has a four seam, a knuckle curveball with a good amount of break and velocity difference. He also throws a sinker as his fourth pitch with a changeup. So that's also going to be a helpful mix. The sinker is always good on the harder difficulties this event. Will be played on hall of fame difficulty so it's a good test for some of these pitchers and they did increase the energy and the stamina for how many pitches that they can throw in these three inning games without getting tired so i'm going to try to extend him hopefully go about two innings that's the plan but uh, we're leading off with juan soto here justin turner will be on deck and juan soto is probably the best face of the franchise diamond that i've used i thought for a while that it was joey gallo but it seems like his vision might be a little too low for Hall of Fame sometimes, as well as Legend. So I really think that the best one so far that I've used is either uh, Juan Soto or Tatis or Glaber Torres, one of those guys. But Justin Turner, in his very first at-bat, gets a slider over the middle of the plate, hits it out for a no-doubter. Normally he's better against lefties, but 90-something contact and 70 power is usable in this game, at least in this early game cycle towards the end game obviously you're not going to want to use that justin turner unless you're facing a lefty as a platoon bat or a bench bat but uh, there are probably going to be better bats to go to at that point but for now i want to use these team affinity cards for now these cards are really good for uh, grinding out showdown completing exchanges doing a combination of both you can really get these cards completed for about 30k stubs a little bit less now depending on the cards that you need to purchase I've been exchanging 79 overall silver players. If you start from scratch, if you have no program stars, you need to buy 55, 79 overall silvers and exchange them. That's going to be a little bit more than enough uh, XP points and percentage points, but it gets the job done, and some of these cards are worth it. I mean, 30K for a solid hitter, if you're doing that for, let's say, Glaber Torres, Tatis, Juan Soto guys I have mentioned or even if you're doing it for a pitcher I mean there are a few solid pitchers in the mix some of them have worse control like Blake Snell or uh, Otani pitchers like that but I like using this Aaron Nola so far I mean in this game he's pitched pretty well I'm taking you guys through a few more pitches than I normally include in these gameplays I like to focus the majority of the gameplay footage on offense but I figured I would show you some uh, some pitch sequences, how I've been able to mix in his four pitches. As you can see, I have no confidence on the fastball. That blue that blue meter that is next to the pitch will indicate how much confidence that pitcher has on that individual pitch. And as you can see, he has the majority of the confidence is on the secondary pitches, the sinker, the knuckle curveball, and the changeup. The fastball confidence is hardly any at all, and that's just going to going to affect the control. 
as well as how much break are, is on some of those pitches. So the more confidence you build up and the more you're going to be able to pitch effectively as well as earn that gold bar of confidence, which I now have after maxing out uh, enough confidence on those pitches. That will certainly help you earn that gold bar and confidence in general. That's just some, some little things that go into pitching in this game. Pitching is already hard enough as you can really get rewarded for your great swings at the plate. In this game specifically, I hit a couple home runs. I had three solo shots so far, and most of them have been but down the middle, pitches over the middle of the plate that I've been able to square up and hit out for uh, no doubt home runs or line drive home runs. So that's kind of the difference in some of these games. Since you are able to hit so well and so effectively, then pitching really, uh, you have to be precise on your pitches as I throw it right down the middle. Uh, that's going to happen over time, but you really want to try and attack the zone as well as expand the zone. I feel like that really helps. I'm trying to throw low in the zone because I feel like t people, at least early game cycle, have a tougher time hitting that low pitch. And you can always tell when you're going up against a really good player who's able to sit back on the off speed and catch up to the fastball. In this specific case right here, I was able to get the opponent to chase those pitches outside the strike zone a little bit and that messed up his timing for those off-speed pitches so i'm really working with three pitches with this aaron nola but they have enough movement to where i can i can use them effectively he also doesn't really have any energy as you can see here in the bottom of the third inning going for the complete game 35 pitches and we get the job done so not a bad debut for nola i mean it's only three inning event game but i feel like i'll be able to use that card pretty well in ranked seasons especially on hall of fame difficulty i want to try and build up my pitchers since i sold a few of them i kept Sixto sanchez who i'll be using in this uh, gameplay right here but i sold casey mize i sold uh michael kopech i sold some of the equipment that i purchased for my creative player in the previous video i wanted to show you all the pretty much the maxed out stats that you could make but i wanted to save up my stubs as well i don't want to necessarily lock in those stubs yet on my creative player especially when i'm going to be grinding out a pitching version of that creative player i want to try and uh, utilize my stubs and save them for future cards that are released into the game i want future content uh, when it comes out i want to be able to pick up some of those cards i feel like my team is good enough at this point to start trying to earn stubs and try to unlock mickey mantle try to er earn stubs to unlock the signature cards and the prime cards that are going to be released i felt like i was uh I was waiting for some of these Battle Royale rewards, but I'll have to keep waiting because those aren't necessarily the cards I'm looking to use on my team for a long time. I mean, sure, they'd be great to try out, but I'll wait for their price to drop if I was going to do so. But uh, so far, I, I have the majority of the cards I want to use, and I've tried out. I've used a lot of these different pitchers in the game, and I feel like I can get by at this point with some of these lower-level diamonds. I, I'll still use Greg Maddox. I'll still use, I'll use this Sixto Sanchez. He's pretty effective. Uh, he has a really good changeup mix with the sinker and the fastball. Uh, the slider doesn't really break that much, but I feel like I can get by with some of these guys. I was using Kopech. He's very effective. Casey Mize, very effective. But uh, for right now, I'm going to try to focus on grinding out the XP reward path. I'll unlock Raleigh Fingers that way, and then uh, eventually Hal Newhauser as well. But, uh, I mean, just by grinding out the game, you can get a lot of these really good free diamonds and uh, test them out in a variety of ways. I've, I sold the Felix Hernandez that I, that I had, that I earned from this event. I'm working towards that Brooks Robinson, but I don't know if I'm going to end up getting him. I don't know if I'm going to play that many games of this event. I've been mixing it up. I've been grinding the computer, playing this event, trying the new cards out that I've unlocked after grinding the computer. So... I wanted to get you guys some of this gameplay right here. Uh, right now we have the pitcher spot up, Sixto Sanchez. I kept him in the game. His spot's due up in the top of the second. Go to J.D. Martinez. J.D. Martinez, I mean, he's a gold card. Still one of the best left-handed or best bats against left-handed pitchers in the entire game. Has 100 contact and power against lefties with 55 vision, something like that. That is perfect, especially with the quirks that he has. This early in the game, I can get by with some gold cards. I can get by with some of these lower level diamonds. But I do want to unlock the higher level diamonds eventually. But I'm going to need to build up my stubs. I'm going to need to save those up and hope for a stub sale and try to invest in some diamonds before they go up in price. But thank you all for watching this video. I'm College Lefty. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.